Hi, this is Humika from the FaceYogaMethod.com. A few weeks ago, I received a very interesting question from one of the face yoga practitioners in Japan. She wanted to know what's the number one teaching lesson I've learned after certifying so many teachers over there. Her question was very unique because I always get questions like how often they need to practice, and which exercise they need to do, or how many repetitions, you know, more like practical questions. So I gave really a serious thought to her questions and in this video, I'm gonna talk about it. My answer might surprise you, but hey, let's get started. To best answer this question, I decided to give you some background information to help the events in context. For one reason or another, I just enjoy teaching and teaching has been part of my life. I have teacher certification from University of Japan. So I taught in high school and a college in Japan for seven years. And I taught at Japanese schools in Canada and US. And I even taught how to make Japanese lunchbox, how to make sushi, how to make mochi, Japanese dessert, and yoga, just for fun. And as you may know, after my car accident, I began creating face exercises just for myself. I wanted to make my face more symmetrical, and I was convinced exercising muscles in my face was the solution. A couple months had passed, and the results were increasing more visible. It wasn't just that my face looking better, but I was feeling the change on the inside. I had more confidence in myself and it showed. You know, whenever you get haircut, eating healthy or exercising, people notice and start complimenting you, right? Same thing happened to me. When I started moving my face muscles and creating the poses for myself, my friends started asking me what I was doing differently. They said I looked different, I looked much better, I looked happier and more content. So when I shared my secrets and when I showed my face movements, my friends loved it. As you know, I couldn't help myself teaching and sharing the information. And even strangers started asking me how to exercise the face muscles because when they found out my age, they were shocked and they wanted to know the secrets. Fast forward to 2010. Here I am living in the US with my husband, Henry and daughter Nina. When I started receiving multiple messages from a face yoga enthusiast who wanted to get certified so that he would be able to teach face yoga on his own. Right off the bat, I said, no. I was happily settled down in US. I bought our first house and we had a new one baby. And I wasn't planning to go back and forth, Japan and the US teaching face yoga or moving back to Japan. On top of that, I didn't know this person. I hadn't met him in person, even though I knew he was so interested teaching face yoga. He was a male nurse and he wanted to learn so that he could teach face yoga to his patients. But when I thought about pros and cons, mm -mm, the cons were so much heavier than pros. That's why I said, no, no thank you. And what you need to understand is that teaching face yoga is one thing but certifying people so that they can teach others face yoga is a completely different scenario. These people would be teaching in my name. I had to make sure everything was done right. After thinking about it extensively and deeply, I decided to give it a shot because we were already planning to go to Japan. My husband, Henry, daughter Nina, who was less than six months old, my mother-in-law, Joyce, and one of my sister-in-laws, Kiera. 
vacationing in Japan for two weeks. So I decided to squeeze certification program while we were there. And in retrospect, that was the craziest idea because I was breastfeeding Nina. So every two hours, I had to leave the studio and I had to feed Nina, sometimes on the street, hiding behind the bush or somewhere finding a place so that I could breastfeed Nina. But I did. And now I have more than 435 face yoga teachers in Japan. And this is gonna be another story to tell. And one of the first four teachers I certified during that trip was Yoshiko. She was a very special case because she did not really want to be a certified teacher. That wasn't her intention. She just wanted to learn face yoga exercises. And since I had given up teaching over there, she felt as if she had no choice but to subscribe to the certification course. Now, this made me a bit skeptical because I wanted everybody that gets certified to be disciplined to teaching and spreading the word and helping others. And everything that I was planning to teach went way beyond simple face exercises. I taught how to hold actual face yoga classes, how to attract the students, what to expect from them, how to identify their problems and so on. I put so much energy and effort. So I wanted my teachers to be excited or, or dedicated as I was. I did not get a sense that she was ready to take such a leap. And to be very honest, certification program was significantly more expensive than regular face yoga classes. So to me, as if Yoshiko wanted to learn some Spanish, but she couldn't find some Spanish classes, so she decided to take certification class to be a certified Spanish teacher. Such a huge commitment, time and money, right? But after hearing her story, I totally got it. You see, Yoshiko is a tango champion turned tango teacher. She told me how she was struggling with her skin and how bloated her face looked. After years of practicing tango, her body was in good shape, but because of how puffy her face looked, it gave the impression that she was overweight and she was angry even though she wasn't. In an industry where the way you look plays such a big role, I could see why she had such strong feelings about toning and changing her face. I realized that even if she wasn't committed to becoming a face yoga teacher, she was definitely motivated to improve her own face. I was determined to help her. The way I saw it is that she trusted me enough to come and ask for help. I had to trust in her that she would be consistent in her practice. She told me about the money and time she was spending to see skincare specialist. And also she was telling me about the, uh, some special medication she was taking to get rid of the acne. Yes, she was suffering from the acne skin too. And when she was taking the medication, acne stopped. But as soon as she stopped taking this medication, acne came back. So it was a consistent struggle. I felt her pain because I had the same issue when I was much younger. And as much as I wanted to help her right away, all I could do as a teacher was give all the information, technique and knowledge so that she could use that. But people don't realize that the real obstacle is actually within themselves. Face exercises, just like body exercises, are all about practicing consistently, even more so with face exercises because the muscles in your face are significantly smaller and thinner, which means that changes can take longer to show compared to the body. You have to put in the effort. No one can do it for you. I was concerned that Yoshika would give up if she didn't start seeing the result right away. Because the main reason of going to Japan at the time was um, to vacation with my family and my in-laws. 
I had such a limited time to certify my students. So I had to jump pack all the information and teaching in four days. So it was super intense from morning to night. And the fourth day was actually a real test. And my students, including Yoshiko, they had to learn everything, not only the name of the pauses, how to perform, but also they had to understand how to be an effective teacher, including eye contact and body gesture. That's what I wanted to see. I wanted to see and feel the passion from them, not only the information. In retrospect, I regret that I didn't videotape everything because it was so intense and so much information that I could have made a wonderful video. After the certification program, I almost wanted to cry with joy and also I was exhausted mentally and physically. And remember, I had my daughter Nina who was less than six months old, so I had to breast, you know, feed her here and there while I was teaching. I am so happy and so glad I did that though, because now I see the information and the love and the passion I shared with my teachers are spreading all over Japan. And at the end of this certification class, the male nurse, remember the one who really insisted me to teach him certification and be a face yoga teacher? He understood why I had so much passion and love. And when he told me that, that made me very happy. And I didn't know it then, but getting certified in face yoga ended up being a major tipping point for Yoshiko. Because of her experience with practicing and teaching tango, being consistent with face yoga came very naturally for her. And over time, friends and family started seeing changes in her face and in her personality too. One thing led to another and Yoshiko started teaching her tango students face exercises. She already had the studio available. What harm could it do? At the very least, she would get to share this new practice with her students. That's the beauty of face yoga. It's one of those situations where results speak for themselves and people notice what started out as something done on the side, primarily for fun and for herself, ended up bringing more people in because now friends of her students started seeing results and wanted to get involved. Yoshiko ended up having so many requests that she began teaching face yoga classes outside of her tango classes. Slowly but surely, face yoga gained momentum in her life. Yoshiko told me afterwards that she was shocked to see how her students' lives start changing. Of course, she saw some positive changing on, you know, face and the physical level, but she was just amazed how much lives are changing in the students. The students start looking more comfortable and confident and the energy and a positive and love started showing from their existence. It's a life changing. And that's when she was convinced that face yoga method actually works. And we live in a life that we put others first and always help others and always put others need first. And how about ourselves? Do we give enough credit to ourselves and love? Maybe not. To Yoshiko, face yoga was a tool for people to take control over their lives so that they can have the best version of themselves, mentally and physically. Seeing her students gain confidence motivated Yoshiko even more. And that's when I asked her if she was willing to take on some of my projects. Even though I was living in the US, I was consistently receiving offers to hold events, give classes, TV shows, and write articles for Japanese magazines. Yoshiko gladly took up my offer and needless to say, she truly blossomed. In just a few years, she'd published 10 books and sold half a million copies. She holds events all over Japan. 
truly making a change in people's lives. I love this. I asked Yoshika, what was the best part about becoming a certified face yoga teacher? And here's what she said. You are helping others change their face, their lives, and on top of that, you're getting paid. It's an amazing job. When you see your students' faces and lives starting to change it, motivates you to keep going. It's the best job ever. I truly love this. The reason why I wanted to share the Yoshiko story with you is because of how it all started. Remember when she came to be certified as a face yoga teacher? She had no intention of becoming a full-time face yoga teacher. Well, not even to teach actual students. She just wanted to tone her face and improve her skin condition. Over time, she managed to put one foot in front of the other and get to where she is today. I'm amazed at how far she has come, her dedication, her willingness to make a change, and how she took ownership of the practice. Yes, it is a face yoga method, as I taught her, but she was never afraid to make it her own. She now designed her classes the way she sees fit. She has adapted to her students and their needs. Watching her evolve has been one of my proudest moments as a teacher. So can you guess what's the number one teaching lesson I learned from my own experience as a face yoga teacher for a long time? I realized that we are not fully able to understand our craft, unique craft we have, until we are able to teach others in a way that they can even be a teacher and spread the message out to others. That was my very first experience certifying face yoga teachers. Six years have passed since then, and I've certified approximately 400 other teachers, all of whom are part of a very supportive community. They participate in events, create their own, and make a living doing what they love. It is truly mind-boggling when I start thinking about it. To be honest, sometimes I even think about taking on new students because now I have more information, more knowledge, and I've learned so much as a teacher. One day, when the time is right, I will. If this is something you think you'll be interested in, you are always welcome to join me on the Face Yoga Teacher Certification Waitlist. Right here. And thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you can get some life-changing experience from the face yoga practice and change your life and change the way you feel about yourself just like Yoshiko did.